Hi there, Will here, and today a Q&A, part three, or perhaps another another Q&A. On a technical level, I've actually recorded this in full like three times now and just haven't liked how it turned out. So hopefully this is the one. We'll start off with the uh, most frequently asked question. All of these came from Instagram, by the way, where I asked people to ask me questions for a video. So I didn't just pull them out of a hat. <laughs> And the most frequently asked question was, how are you? Uh, mostly in reference to my health and uh, life in general. The answer to that is that I'm doing very well, thank you, in terms of health. Everything is uh, on the up and up. I feel stronger than I did before all of this, which is uh, encouraging since there was a stage where I didn't really feel as if I'd <laughs> get back to full strength at all. And now I'm sort of starting to realize that uh, I didn't actually feel normal before. And now I feel normal, I think. And normal is nice, so I'm doing quite well, health-wise. And now we'll move on to the uh, more exotic questions, I suppose. Can you give us a car tour? Yes. This is my Isuzu Frontier KB280 diesel turbo. The shape of the car is uh, quite uh, common, likely, to a lot of people around the world because the bodies and the uh, different variations on the bodies were used in a number of different cars. I think there was a Vauxhall Frontera, which was uh, quite popular overseas. And uh, I think Isuzu Rodeo was one of the models, but uh, my one's an Isuzu Frontier. I like the Frontier aspect as well because, you know, Frontier scanners, Frontier. It's spare wheel attaches with a uh, hinge over here, so it swings open like that. These are known to be weak points on the cars, so when I bought it I made sure that there was no tearing on the body of itself because apparently it wasn't a very good design choice to have this thingy uh, directly attached just to the plate metal of the body. It's powered by a 4JB1 uh, diesel engine with a manual fuel pump. It's a bit muddy at the moment because we uh, have been driving a lot of muddy dirt road situations but I mean it looks pretty decent for a 23 year old car if you ask me. And believe it or not they are pretty sought after as cars go in South Africa. I mean they're really popular on the second hand market obviously because they don't make them new anymore but uh, finding one in condition like this took me a very long time and uh, I'm very attached to it because it took me five years to save up for it so <laughs> I'm very happy with it. In terms of its uh, features got an immobilizer, which is of course crucial, a radio, tailgate opening switch, rear window defroster, can adjust the uh, intensity of the cabin lights over here, so I can turn them down a bit or turn them up, depending on what is preferred, as so, ta-da, 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 pretty cool. It's not 4x4, but it does have a diff lock, ignore the gold thing, the gold thing is part of the story of uh, buying the car slightly munched by rats at some point in its existence or field mice so it might have stood in a field for a while a four disc cd uh changer which of course was very high tech for back in the day central locking electric window adjustment and uh i don't know speed and rev counters can check if the oil's overheating, you know? Nothing too exciting. The aircon works. I spent uh, like three solid days cleaning the leather seats to get them as vaguely clean as they are now. <laughs> but a big part of the appeal of it was that I can do this. Lift there, pop that. I can turn the whole back into a uh, completely sleepable situation, which was one of the main reasons I was interested in it. You may note that there are none of the uh, airbag symbols floating around here because it does not have airbags and as a result has this very useful uh, cubby which uh, would of course be where the airbag is on most cars. Thus I tend to drive uh, quite safely <laughs> at all times because there's uh, no going back with this. It's got a light up uh, a light a bit, a light up ashtray. The interior is a bit dirty because we've just come back from two weeks in the Karoo, so <laughs> there's a bit of mud going on because it's been raining more than it has there in uh, like the last three decades, but uh, I think that's pretty much it. It's not exactly the most feature stacked car in the world, but it's uh, the exact car I wanted and uh, as you know I decided to buy it because 
I had cancer, so decided I don't need money if I have cancer. <laughs> and now I don't have cancer anymore, but I do have a car, so it was a, a big win. Anyway, on to the next question. Would you be able to offer your retouching as a service to us? I think it should be possible. I uh, looked into this, obviously, after reading this question initially, and I think it's something that I can do. I'll talk more about it later in the video, but uh, there'll be an option to do so on my Buy Me A Coffee, I reckon. Do you enjoy doing assistant work, or would you rather be shooting your own stuff? I see assistant work, to be honest, is more of like a day job thing. Like the, the reason I get to do it is because I have my own like practice and know how to use these cameras and like work with light and that sort of thing. But assistant work is more like a nine to five, except it's not nine to five normally. Normally it's like 20 hours, but essentially I see assistant work as work and my own photographic stuff as like my photographic practice and they don't really go hand in hand. So they're completely separate things. And would I rather be shooting my own stuff? Yes, but I wouldn't rather be shooting my own stuff on the jobs that I'm assisting on, if that makes sense. Because the jobs that I'm assisting on, without fail, the photographers tend to be completely unfulfilled by what it is they're doing. I'm not talking about like jobs that I'm shooting with my mates like Kent, but like the big commercial jobs for like huge conglomerates, none of the people that are shooting those things are actually coming away from it fulfilled, you know? And I wouldn't really want to be doing that outside of the fact that it'd be very nice to earn that amount of money. <laughs> so uh, I would shoot a campaign, but I'd rather just be making my own photos and earning a living through making photos in my photographic practice as opposed to the work that I do assisting. Have you tried AI to preview compositions? No, I have not tried AI to preview compositions. I have not uh, really tried AI for anything, to be honest. I, uh, I'm scared of AI. No, it's just I'm, the whole experience of using a computer to try and wangle it to make something like with prompts, I'm not into it. And uh, I don't really see it offering much benefit to my practice currently. Maybe if I go and uh, tinker with it, I'll find it encouraging, but to be honest, the whole AI thing is uh, not something I have a particularly large interest in at the moment. I'll uh, pay more attention when it starts to become a true threat. Are you doing any darkroom printing currently? I am unfortunately not doing any darkroom printing because uh, we've moved house and I don't have a darkroom here anymore. And uh, I really like using my own enlarger to print because I know it and it knows me. And uh, currently I don't have it set up anywhere. So maybe at some point in the near future, I'll find a place for it to live or somehow manage to build a darkroom here, even though there really isn't space. But uh, currently no, in the future, hopefully, please yes. How did you find your style? Did you have an aha moment or did it come naturally? There definitely uh, wasn't an aha moment, I mean, I suppose you could say it came naturally, but like for me, naturally was like just working nonstop at it to try get it to go somewhere. And I feel like as soon as I stopped trying to have a specific vision for what it needed to be and just focused on refining my practice in terms of like working with my scanner and retouching things and that sort of thing, it came to be because I gained the ability to sort of actually get across what I had in my head. You know, a lot of the time when you're editing a photo or like working on a scan, you feel it's a gigantic struggle because you can't actually get what you have in your mind onto the screen or the piece of paper or whatever. And I feel like my look came into being itself when I finally managed to sort of be able to get what's going on in my head onto the screen. You know, I still don't really think everything is exactly where I want it to be, but uh, if I have a look now, it's because <laughs> I just tinkered until it, it became its own thing, naturally. Favorite hobbies outside of photography? I uh, don't really do all that much outside of photography. I, uh, my main interest in life is photography, but uh, the two things that I'm currently doing outside of photography are uh, gaming. I like computer games, always like computer games. Downloaded Hogwarts Legacy recently, that was a, a pretty good experience, like nostalgia value, but to be honest, I played all the old Harry Potter games in advance of that, and 
they were better even though they weren't uh, of a similar scope or scale, you know, because, I mean, this isn't a Hogwarts Legacy review, but that game, it felt like there was a lot of awesome stuff that was set up and then it never actually got a conclusion, you know, like all of the challenges and that sort of thing, like, never really went anywhere. Opinion on modern film cameras, like the Nikon F6. I think modern film cameras are awesome. I think they're super expensive, so I don't really own that many of them. I mean, the most modern one that I own is probably the Contax G2, I think. And uh, it's great. The mo more modern ones that I've used, I haven't used like the Nikon F6 or any of the advanced 35mm ones, but I've worked with uh, like Hasselblad H4s or the film Hasselblad film cameras that still, to this day, I think pretty much can run a film back. And those are amazing. <laughs> I mean, having everything just done for you and like a Hasselblad lens on it is an unparalleled experience. I mean, the, 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 I don't think there's ever really been an argument for the fact that advanced film cameras aren't better at doing a lot of the things that the older ones could do. It's just that currently, if you're buying an advanced film camera, it's like a ticking time bomb and they are still incredibly expensive. So I'm not sure it's really worth it unless you've just got money to blow and can essentially rent a modern film camera until it dies and then rent another one until it dies, you know? Because owning it would be like renting something before its demise. What do you like most about photography as your medium of preference? I'm not sure, to be honest. I think photography is my medium of preference because when I started doing it, it felt like something that one could get good at quite easily, you know? Like when you're not deep into photography, you look at photos and you're like, ah, oh, well, I can pick up a camera and make something like that. And then as it turned out, it wasn't that easy. And I was like, okay, but surely if I just work a bit more at it, then I'll get to where I want to be. And it's basically been like 10 years now of that, of like, ah, oh, I'll just work a bit more at it and then I'll get to where I want to be. And it's my medium of preference because I've got so much time invested in it now that it's like a sunken cost fallacy thing. But also because I've done many things like drawing, graffiti, like artistic ventures, and none of them actually fulfilled me in the way that photography does. I don't, I don't know what the reason is for that. Maybe because I'm a lot better at this stage at making photos than I am at drawing, and I'm not gonna jump ship from the photo making train. What do you love about photography and what keeps you motivated? I think that ties into the answer I gave to the previous question now, but essentially what keeps me motivated <laughs> is uh, the, the fact that I'm never really fully satisfied with what I'm making. And I also love that about photography because I mean, one has to have a mission and a challenge in life. And for me, that's what photography is. It's like something that I can try to constantly better myself at and uh, constantly be on the lookout for the next photo, you know? Come. There you go. This is Cat, by the way, our adopted kitty cat. Okay, Cat. Where is the Super 8 video from the B photo video? For context, I was shooting Super 8 in uh, the video I made about like challenging my shelf, <laughs> my shelf, challenging, ch challenging, challenging myself to photograph bees. And uh, it is here, oh dear. And slightly full of condensation from the fridge, which is not a good sign. Cause I shot it halfway through and then the camera I was shooting it on had to go back cause I was borrowing it from my mate, Chris. And uh, I haven't finished it because it needs to be so good to warrant uh, the amount of money it's going to cost me to send off overseas that uh, I haven't really <laughs> had any ideas that seem worthwhile. But I'll finish it at some point, I reckon. Just uh, no definitive date. Will there be a Lesotho photo book slash zine? Currently, no. If I ever go back for an extended period and make like enough work to be able to edit down into like 80 good photographs as opposed to the 80 total photographs I made when I was there, then definitely yes. And I'm thinking quite strongly about making like a zine of some kind at the moment too. I've got a couple ideas floating around, so maybe at some point in the future there'll be a zine. This is an improvement over the last time someone asked about zines because then it was uh, no plans. But now the plans are forming. So maybe by the next Q&A, there will actually be something in action. Imposter syndrome. I answered a question on this, I think in the first Q&A, maybe the second one, but uh, I think my answer to that was essentially that uh, you can't be an imposter because the only person you should be doing this is for is yourself. However, I have an amendment to that now because uh, I've had the opportunity over the last like six months or so to work on some really, really big 
sets, like huge worldwide campaign sets where people are shooting film. And all of them that I worked on, without fail, the photographers still felt like they didn't belong there, you know? So even the people that you look up to and think, wow, these guys are making the most amazing thing, that's what a real photographer is, they're sitting over there thinking, I wish I was a real photographer, you know? So I suppose keep that in mind. <laughs> Do you have something in particular you really want to document photographically? Yes. This actually ties into the zine thing or book thing because I, whilst lying in bed for an extended period of time uh, in the recent past, had a thought. Because I was looking at this body of work by David Chancellor, where he went and photographed hunters and also conservation efforts, I think. I think he photographed like, uh, what's his name? Old British guy. Maya, who's the guy who voices BBC World or BBC Planet or Planet Earth or whatever? David Attenborough. He photographed David Attenborough as part of his thing, but uh, essentially what he did was he went around to places where people hunt and he photographed hunters and active hunting and like the whole thing was about how hunting ties into conservation and I found it interesting. However, he was around South Africa as a British person uh, photographing South African things and I thought to myself, hmm, I can't necessarily compete with the body of work, but maybe I can offer an alternative perspective because I am after all South African as opposed to being British. So. Maybe, what? Maybe I'll uh, go photograph some hunters at some point. Do you have any plans for new prints in the print shop? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, there's going to be a great print store update at some point in the future where I put a whole bunch of new stuff on there and remove most of the old stuff. Uh, potentially with the next video. Or maybe I'll put some out now. In fact, I'll put a few new ones out this very moment, but uh, the majority of them will come out with the next video. Have you ever tried shooting with Polaroid cameras? Yes, here, here is a video of me shooting uh, a Polaroid SX-70 in the Maldives. Tips for building a photography portfolio. Hmm, make a lot of photographs. I reckon that, uh, that would be my solution, because, I mean, I had a lovely portfolio before I got sick and now I want to refresh it, but I don't have a lot of photographs because I've been sick and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, <laughs> I should probably go make some photographs so I can make a portfolio. So my advice for building a portfolio would be to make a lot of photographs and then perhaps out of those photographs, there'll be some really nice ones that you can put in portfolio. The main thing about a portfolio though, isn't actually that all the photographs are bangers, at least I've found. The main thing is to have it make sense for the person you're trying to present it to. So like a selection of images from a portfolio specifically arranged for whatever client it is you're trying to appeal to because they don't necessarily want to see like your greatest landscapes if they're a sock company, you know, and vice versa. Have you seen the Sid the Sloth rock formation near Pringle Bay? Also your favorite beach. I have not seen the Sid the Sloth rock formation near Pringle Bay. I uh, shall have to keep an eye out for it, I suppose. And my favorite beach in Cape Town probably Bali Bay because uh, it's not super sandy and I really don't like super sandy beaches because the sand gets everywhere. Do you do anxiety? I do do anxiety, but then I go make some photos and hopefully that makes me feel better generally. Have you tried 110 film and uh, your opinions? I have not in fact tried 110 film. I bought this Lomo uh, Tiger stuff for a 110 camera that someone very kindly sent me a while ago and have not shot it yet. So I can't offer opinions, but I will offer opinions in a video when I shoot this. Will there be more underwater photography videos in the future? There will be many more. I bought uh, two new Nikonos 5 bodies. So that's at least two uh, underwater photography trips I can do based on my luck. <laughs> so uh, definitely, yes. I actually even considered buying an F3 housing recently, but I'm trying to avoid buying things that I'll use like once and then just have lying around, so. How bad is death for non-human animals? I don't know. Uh, this question is from a high school friend of mine called Jamie who wrote her dissertation on that. And I do not know because you have not sent me your dissertation yet. So one day when I read your dissertation, I'll have an answer. Do you have a criteria by which you critique your own photographs? I don't know. I just kind of look at them and I know if I want to use them or not, you know, and then I'll leave them. And sometimes I'll go back to things and then realize I should have used it. But at the end of the day, the definitive uh, criteria would be if it's in focus properly, <laughs> which at the moment, I'm missing like more than I'm used to. So probably need to get back in practice. 
Do you have any travel plans? Would you like to meet for coffee in Long Beach, LA? Are you going to come to Canada? We should do an Egypt thing, North Africa, meet South Africa, Paris. All of these places would be super wonderful to visit. Uh, the only thing stopping me from traveling pretty much anywhere in the world at the moment is uh, the question of uh, how I'll fund it. So maybe if things start kicking off again work-wise or I don't know, for some other reason I am financially able to do so, I would love to come visit all of these places. Do you shoot with any medium format cameras besides Mamiya's? Nope, I do not. I like Mamiya, I like the system. I have used like Hasselblad's and Pentaxes and all of those like in the professional context, but the Mamiya wins for me. Do you have any plans for a book? I don't know, we'll see how that uh, hunting idea goes and then maybe there'll be a book. What country do you want to see the most? Personally, I really want to go to rural Japan. I mean, in the Lesotho video, someone commented saying that the rural Japan, like in the spring, is all cosmos flowers, so that also has an immense appeal to me. But uh, my answer is going to be the same as the last time someone asked me about my dream travel destination, which would be uh, the Ruanzuri Mountains in Uganda. In fact, uh, my friend and uh, the person who I work with frequently, Kent, is visiting that exact location at some point in the near future, which I'm immensely jealous of because I don't get to go this time. And it's like my dream spot that's been my dream spot five many years. So that, uh, that would be the country I want to visit the most at the moment, Uganda. And at that exact moment, the uh, sun went behind a very dense cloud and we lost all the light. So now you see me here. Which is just as well, because I was just going to do my outro then, and uh, also now that I've edited most of the video, I noticed that I didn't point out what my second hobby was that I mentioned, and uh, it's PCP target shooting, so it's like an air rifle. It's quite fun. I used to be quite into it when I was younger, and then obviously sort of fell out of uh, doing it as things kicked off, but now that I've had uh, a chance to reevaluate uh, life, I've decided that maybe I'll get into that for a bit again. It's just fun to have something completely outside of photography to do. And you can exercise your brain a little because there's like calculations involved and stuff. Anyway, uh, to mention the retouching thing I was talking about, there'll be an option on my Buy Me A Coffee Now for you to like commission a retouched picture. So you can like send me a scan that you want retouched and I'll do all the color and dusting if you choose to have it dusted and that sort of thing. Sort of intended to be for people that want to take stuff to print or just, you know, want a really big scan worked on because it's not really uh, something I do working on smaller scans. I mean, you can do it as an option there to just be less work for me, but I mean, the price of it is sort of tailored towards the big stuff. It's less than like my normal retouching rate, but it's still like if, if you're not a company or whatever, probably, I don't know, it's up to you. If you want to have something retouched, you have an option now or 10 of you have an option now. And uh, besides that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. An immense thank you, as always, to the members of my Buy Me A Coffee who make uh, all of this possible. Still haven't run an advert on the channel as of yet, which is uh, quite an accomplishment, I reckon. If you've ever had an advert on anything around here, it's because uh, YouTube put it there, not me, and I have not made any money from it. <laughs> they better not have, actually, because I really I just don't like the idea of having adverts on my videos, to be honest. Not that I'm against it, I just don't like it. Anyway, thank you to the Buy Me A Coffee members for that. And uh, I'll see you again very soon.